On Sunday, for the second time this election cycle, a man was able to get close to Donald Trump with a rifle. The former president was golfing when Secret Service agents spotted a rifle poking out of some bushes just off the course near a hole Trump would soon play. Agents fired on the suspect, causing him to flee as Trump was rushed off the course. Shortly after that, the man was apprehended by police. A scoped rifle, two backpacks, and a video camera were recovered from the woods where the suspect was hiding. The FBI said it was investigating the incident as an attempted assassination. The suspect, Ryan Routh, has so far been charged with two gun-related crimes. While there are clearly some major differences between this incident and the first assassination attempt in July, when Trump was shot in the ear during a rally in Butler, Pennsylvania. The fact that an armed man was able to get so close to the former president and remain undetected until the last moment for the second time in two months is a big deal. Yet the reaction from the political establishment and the establishment media has been notably different. Back in July, there was broad agreement within the establishment that they needed to lower the temperature. This week, the rhetoric has changed. While most go through the motion of denouncing political violence, establishment figures and outlets have downplayed the assassination attempt, obscured the attempted shooter's political ideology, and even blamed Trump himself for provoking people into trying to kill him. It's not surprising that the political establishment and their friends in the media want to dismiss or play down what happened on Sunday. Because Ryan Routh, the suspect, appears to have been motivated by the exact narrative of the war in Ukraine and the prospect of a second Trump term, that the establishment is trying so hard to get the American public to accept. Early in 2022, after Russia invaded Ukraine, the American establishment went into overdrive to whitewash all of the developments that had led to the invasion. They instead defined Vladimir Putin as an expansionist tyrant bent on conquering all of Europe simply because he hates freedom and democracy. Because of unearthed social media posts, numerous interviews with major outlets like the New York Times, and the self-published book, we can clearly see that Routh was completely convinced by the establishment's characterization of the war. So much so that in the months after the war broke out, Routh traveled to Ukraine to try and join the fight. He was turned away apparently due to his age, but stuck around to try and recruit other foreigners to join Ukraine's ranks. In one interview with Newsweek, Routh laid out how he views the war. So me, you know, a lot of the other conflicts are gray, but this conflict is definitely black and white. This is about good versus evil. This is a storybook, you know, any movie we've ever watched, this is definitely evil against good. I mean, it's, it's, it seems asinine that we have a, a leader in a country that does not understand the concept of, of being unselfish and being generous and being kind and just a basic moral values that, that are required by human beings these days. It blows my mind. That is exactly how the pundits and politicians who make up the American political establishment want us thinking about this war. Not as an unnecessary geopolitical conflict that escalated for decades before erupting into the conventional war we see today, but simply as a black and white showdown with an evil country. Importantly, as can be seen in the opening to Biden's State of the Union address from earlier this year, the establishment has explicitly conflated this threat abroad with what they call the threat at home, meaning Trump and the MAGA movement. So if a disturbed person like Ryan Routh was convinced he would be a hero if he went and fought the evil Russians in Ukraine only to be turned away because of his age, it's not much of a jump to expect that he concluded he could still be a hero if he set his sights on what he was told is the same threat at home. That's not to say that the establishment voices pushing the simplistic narratives that captured Routh directly incited his assassination attempt, although it would under the standard they applied to Trump in January 6th. Only that the establishment is using misleading and sometimes wholly fictional narratives about the war in Ukraine and the populist anger directed toward them to try and scare us into voting in ways that support their interests. It shouldn't surprise anyone when these contrived, simplistic, overly dramatic narratives lead some impressionable people to decide voting isn't enough.